What's up guys, this is Jonas coming back at you with another MA2 Pro video. So today I want to show you how you can mix and mash sequences and effects, a topic that's very dear to my heart because I believe that your shows can be really cool if you're able to mix those two types of contents because to me personally, they have two very different use cases actually. Now, if you're just learning Granime 2, then make sure to check out my Learn Granime 2 series. Uh, it's in the video description or just in the sidebar or on my channel. Uh, you'll find it, I'm sure of that. All right, so let's talk about sequences and effects and um, why exactly I'm making a video about this. Um, I had a couple of shows this year where something went terribly wrong because all of a sudden in the middle of the show, I lost half my content, it seemed. And to show you how easy that is, uh, let's actually jump into our example. Now, what I prepared here is something very simple. Um, I have two LED bars, which are perfect for this demonstration because they only have two attribute types, dimmer and something else, in this case, color. And having these two attribute types, types intensity, and something else, in this case, color is perfect for demonstrating different variations of HTTP, LTP, um, and, and other executor options. So I have my effect running over here and I'm trying to trigger my sequences, but they don't work. So what the hell? All of a sudden I had all my nice sequences prepared, but just because I had an effect running, uh, nothing happened. And also in that moment, I had quite a few effects running. so. I didn't really want to turn off my whole show just because to be able to access the other part of my shows. Let's take a look at what's happening here. Now, first of all, if we take a look at sequences, the um, standard settings are priority LTP, latest takes precedent, some weird obscure soft LTP option that's supposed to fade between sequences when they turn each other off. Um, and that actually happens because of off on overwritten. So you can see here if I got this sequence going, which just has a dimmer attribute actually that it outputs, and then I activate this sequence over here, um, it works. So even though this is the lower dimmer value of only 20, um, in this case, it does work, um, that this is the dominant output because the latest uh, activated executor takes the precedent here. And you can also see that off and overwritten is triggered. Um, I only ever have one output going. Now the problem is that um, the effects in their default option actually are set to HTTP, highest takes precedent. So in that case, this sucker over here just completely overrode my sequences. And what you can see is that since this also has off and overwritten activated, um, my sequences would actually just turn off immediately. Isn't that great? <laughs> so that was really confusing. Um, if you're in a live scenario and you hadn't thought of that or you, you never encountered something like that, I mean, keep in mind that these are default settings. So in the default settings, all of a sudden you can't mix your sequences in with your effects. What's up with that? So what I did here instead um, is set it all to LTP. And keep in mind that um, if you find a nice piece of setting, or nice um, settings for your effects. Um, go ahead and click on save default effect options so that every time you assign an effect to an executor, these exact options are used. Uh, if you just swap it around, go through all your effects and hit load default options. And what's also really important, if you are using pool playback, which I did, which kind of added to my confusion, then you need to remember settings. Um, this will actually set all of these values to your pool playbacks. All right, so now we can actually mix and match. Um, if I go to the effect, perfect, turns on. I mean, that was the behavior before as well. But now if I click on my um, sequence, then it actually jumps in. Now everything is on LTP and we can perfectly mix and match. What it really brings in is that if you uh, let's turn on this dimmer over here. So if you just have sequences to set something like color or gobos or positions, um, then LTP with off and overwritten is perfect because it allows you to actually set one color and then override all the other color um, sequences. So like that, 
Um, LTP would often overwritten as perfect for just setting different static looks. Um, it might not be perfect necessarily for um, you know, your dimmer uh, sequences, effects, and chases. So let's talk about that in a second. One more thing that you have to know. Um, so often overwritten is actually a pretty fragile option. What I'm going to do here is actually bring in a color. Uh, put this to zero, this to zero. Okay, whoops. So if you have um, something with a dimmer and then you bring in something that has a dimmer and a color, uh, in this case, it's overwritten because often overwritten always works when everything that this previous executor brings to the output is actually overwritten by another executor, then it turns off. That unfortunately means that if we now turn this back on, um, yes, the dimmer value is actually used from this one. But since this executor still brings color into the output, it's not completely overwritten. And that's why it's not turned off. So that's where often overwritten becomes a bit of a fragile option, to be honest. So um, to kind of get around that, you want to really make sure that you strictly separate your types of content that you assign to your executor groups. So now this works again perfectly. Another caveat that you have to make sure or watch out for. Um, one thing that I did over here is actually set my dimmer to 96%. That's something that you might not necessarily know or notice. So if, if you're having a pool playback, for example, and God forbid you actually use the small fader over here with your mouse, well, watch what happens. Um, often overwritten breaks. LTP still kicks in, that's perfect, but um, often overwritten breaks because this is only at 96%. This is something that is very easy to miss. Um, so if you have your colors or gobos, make sure that all the master faders are at 100% because these little things can actually trip you up so hard and kind of accumulate into a seemingly broken state, um, especially when you're stressed during a live situation. Now, one thing that's really interesting is that if I activate a sequence here after playing um, an effect and then I turn this off, then nothing is going out anymore to the stage output. And that's something I don't really want to have usually. Um, so when I have my effects going, I kind of want to be able to quickly bring in some sequences just for that little bit of salt and pepper, as I said. Um, just for that one moment where uh, something nice happens in the music or a new element comes in into play. Um, so in, essentially, I kind of want to have my effects going while being able to, to uh, you know, smash my buttons uh, with my sequences. And one thing you can um, accomplish that is to actually assign a go release. <laughs> this, is, this is stupid, but it works. So I have my effect going here, and um, over here I just have a simple dimmer sequence. And you can see here that I can actually activate this, and it fades out nicely. Um, to go back to this sequence. If we take a look at the options here, it's also LTP, often overwritten, all the good stuff. So this is quite, quite mind boggling to me how that works because watch what happens when I assign a flash. Whoops. Wah. So now if I assign a flash here and I just hit it really shortly, Often overwritten is not triggered, but if I hold it down, oh my god, this sequence is off. <laughs> I double checked the manual. There's no, there's no distinction about the amount of flash that you have to press in order for often overwritten to trigger. Man, just imagine being a software developer for this product and having to deal with tests that uh, kind of have to double check this kind of behavior. So if you have um, your playback all um, sort of focus on being all LTP, you can always use Go Release to bring in uh, temporary content for your sequences with your effects still running. Okay, so that's HTTP for you. Let's take a look at LTP now, which is actually my favorite option. And let me just relabel those. So now I'm going to go in here uh, and actually change this to HTTP, turn this off. Uh, all right. 
And I'm also going to turn off off and overwritten for that case. So in general, what I actually like to do with my dimmer stuff is have off and overwritten deactivated and use HTTP. And the reason for that is the following. Um, let's say I have an effect going here, then what I can do is actually bring in this sequence, have this effect sort of still bubbling along the background. So now let's say we have an effect going here and this is just for dramatic purposes. What's cool is that if I have HTTP without often overwritten, um, I can actually uh, sort of bring in my effect here to fill in um, my, my sequence, sorry. I can actually bring in my sequence here to fill in what the effect is doing. And what's also really nice is that I can actually assign a flash to this. And now I can sort of set a base level of intensity while being able to bring um, you know, sort of this effect in of, of, you know, this actually going really crazy. So that's something I really like to do for mixing sequences and effects when we are talking about dimmers, um, just because this allows me to nicely mix and match what's going on here. Um, and what's cool, you know, if you have like a really special part of the song, you can fade up your fixtures and then kind of decide how um, you know, the look's going to continue after this special part is over. Um, and then in the background, you can already fade in um, your effects, kind of bring them into position, and then you can slowly fade out this brightness level and you have your show going as usual. And so like that, it's, it's really cool because you can actually create these transitions between parts of your song by just kind of turning everything up, making the room super bright, swapping out the, the sequence, uh, the effects in the background, and then fading out this brightness um, to smoothly transition into another mood um, of the room. So that's a really beautiful option, I think, for um, playing back dimmer values. Now, one thing that I also thought about is how the hell, if we don't even have often overwritten activated, and keep in mind, I think uh, often overwritten is still really important for using um, in color pickers, for example. Um, so how do we how do we kind of make sure that with you know ten thousand different playbacks being on, we can start still turn it all off? Uh, and for that, I created a macro to kind of demonstrate. Uh, what we can do is we can kind of just say off executor one through. So in that case, all the executors um, and then fade one. So let's take a look. We can actually here uh, trigger this and now it's all fading out really nicely. So what you can do here is that uh, you kind of make sure that all your executors for intensities sort of start from a certain page or from a certain number. So with this little trick, um, I think you have the perfect set of options here. You can use LTP with off and overwritten, make sure that the dimmer is all set and that you actually use only one attribute type in these sequences. But if you do that, you can actually use sequences to perfectly set different static looks like color, gobo, positions, whatever. And then on your, um, on your dimmer chases um, or dimmer looks, you can actually use HTTP um, without often overwritten to kind of be able to mix and match your stuff freely. So like that, I think um, you have a really, really good set of um, different playback options that allow you to create really cool looking shows where the main point is that you stay in control. And then with this little trick over here, you can make sure that everything is turned off so that uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, still playing playbacks, sort of bleeding out into your output. So that's all I wanted to show you today. I know this is a very technical topic. This was a very specific set of options that we discussed here. Um, but feel free to actually download this little playground. I think this is perfect for testing out different combinations of options just because the example is so simple. Um, it really helped me kind of figure out different different ways to use stuff. So next time you get stuck, um, you know, make sure to take a deep breath um, and then try to analyze what went wrong, uh, especially with priorities in terms of playbacks. It's really easy to get a bit of chaos into it. So download the show file if you like and um, test out your favorite options to really nail it down. Um, the challenge here is really that just as an 
the example of the goal release, um, you can sometimes get a combination of options that just doesn't really make much sense because it's nowhere, because it's documented nowhere. All right, so this is all I wanted to show you for today. Um, I know there's a very specific set of options. Um, and what really surprised me is that the Go release on LTP, like I say, yes. Uh, so the Go release on LTP doesn't actually trigger the often overwritten. That kind of stuff you can only really find out when you um, take a simple example like this and play around with it. So if you have a favorite set of options for your playbacks, um, but you ran into some issues, feel free to download the show files in the video description and then just use this very, very simple setup to test and um, play around with your different options. Um, for me, it really helped me to deeper understand it. And I think in the future, I will really be able to set the, exactly the options that I need for my playbacks. So uh, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, thank you so much to the 2,000 subscribers. Uh, this is amazing, you guys. It's been just a little over a year and um, 2,000 subscribers. And this, this is insane. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, if you need anything from me, uh, reach out in the comments on Twitter, on Instagram, or through my email address, hi at a guy in gymnast.com. All right, that's all. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching you guys. In two weeks, I will upload the next video and that's gonna be on a plugin that turns presets and groups into sequences. So get subscribed and be back. See you then.